This is a Singer 20U. Oh wait, let's introduce you. Oh. Fashion designer Alice Berry. <laughs> Yay. Okay. <laughs> so um, this machine can do two kinds of stitches. It can do a straight stitch, which just it has a switch here that's on and off over here. So I'm going to click it on and. It will do a straight stitch. Now it has a motor that's separate from the machine, which is underneath. And it has one and a half, no, sorry, a half a horsepower motor. So that's why it goes so fast. And like that. And it's kind of like driving a car. It's got a clutch. And so you want to be sure not to jam it when you're sewing so you can practice and go kind of slow like that and then gradually go faster. What the way I'm raising this here is called the presser foot mm -hmm. and I'm raising that with my knee. This is a knee control. Now you can also control this back here this lever back here, but when you're sewing, you want to have both hands, and so that's why they have the knee thing. This bar is the reverse bar, so you you don't want you you always stop, press that down. And the machine will sew backwards. For backstitch. For backstitch and tacking, exactly. Part two should be how to change the bobbin. The top thread is the needle thread. The bottom thread is the bobbin thread. This door opens up. You can, there's a little hole there. You can use your finger, but you can also reach under, push it up. There's a flap on the side of the bobbin. You can pull it out. You can pull it out, you see your typical a, singer bobbin? Uh, this is a bobbin for the 20U. Oh, okay. It only, you, you need a bobbin and then the bobbin case. I'm so used to the case looking just like that. Right, well they are not all the same. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not certain, frankly, if other models of singers will use this same bobbin okay. case, but just to be on the safe side, you want to keep this case with this machine. Mm -hmm. I've given you an extra one in your equipment, but this one I know works well, so that's the one that's in there now. So here's your bobbin, and the way you work this is so you put the bobbin in the case. There's a slot here. You run the thread through the slot, and then you pull it underneath this tension guide. If you can see right there, mm -hmm. it fits in that little slot. And some people, particularly if you have a thread that is slick or shiny, you can put it through that little sp spring there to make sure that the thread doesn't jump around. So I'm holding it by the flap. The opening faces up. When I put it in, it fits right in. Now you want to jiggle it to make sure that it's secure in. Okay. So it's 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 gonna be it's gonna fit, but it's not gonna be tight tight because it has to spin. So you hold the needle thread. This is called the flywheel on this side. We're going to get to that later. But this is the flywheel, and if you just put enough pressure to release the needle, the flywheel wheel will turn, and that picks up the bobbin thread. See, that comes up in a loop, so that's like that. You always want to have the threads facing to the back when you start. And then... machine on and you can sew. Goes there. 
this is just to hold the bobbin under bobbin thread under tension while you're winding it. So Wrap it around a few times. This hold puts it into place. So release puts it into place. Now, this machine, in theory, can loosen the flywheel. Okay, I'm not sure if this will work, but there's a a dial on the side here that you can loosen. And it disengages. And that. it disengages that. Now, mm -hmm. whether or not that works, I'm not sure. As I recall. There was a problem with it before, but it doesn't really matter because what that does is keep the needle from going. So if this isn't disengaged, you just pull the thread out of the needle and it'll be fine. So, oh, come on. Yeah, it's, it's not. There it goes. Right. Yeah, so it does disengage. Perfect. I'm only holding this because the thread was catching on the spool. Normally yeah. you wouldn't have to hold that. Thread. And if this does what it's supposed to do, it will stop right when, yep, there it goes. Right when it's full, it releases. So then you cut that, you have a nicely new wound bobbin. This little, I don't know, it's kind of like a uh, Paddle. Screw, thumb screw. That's mm -hmm. what we're looking for. This thumb screw tightens and loosens the needle. Now, I'm going to loosen it now, turning it towards me. Oops. I have to use a plier because sometimes when it's been running a lot, it tightens up. comes out. The needle for this machine is round. A lot of times on sewing machines you'll have a needle with a flat back. This needle doesn't have that. What it has is a groove in front of the needle. You can kind of put your fingernail in there and feel that groove. That groove faces forward towards you. So when you go to put the needle back in or change the needle, because a lot of times when the stitch you have, if it's skipping stitches, that mm -hmm. means you need a new needle. So you have the groove facing towards you. Push the needle in. Make sure that it's facing you. You don't want it sideways. The hole and the needle have to be straight on. And you tighten it up again. So then, you thread the needle. Okay, now let's check and see that my needle is placed correctly. It's a real easy way to tell if it doesn't sew, it's not in right. Okay, I have to re-engage the flywheel. Okay. And what if there's tension problems? Well, that's a whole nother little issue. This screw here is a double screw. There's one screw and then there's another screw. It's set now for tension that is normal on the thread. It's also pretty balanced so that you can see on the top and the bottom there's equal tension. This seems like the, if you can see the loop, it, it, this is too small for you to see, but when you look at the stitch you'll see there's a little tiny loop that you can see there. Mm -hmm. That's the top thread being pulled onto the bottom. Ideally you can't see that from either side. Mm -hmm. 
but if you have thick fabric, if you have knits, depending upon what you're sewing, you can adjust the tension. Mm -hmm. This is pretty all-purpose. If you were sewing like a heavy wool, you might want to adjust it, make it a little looser. And I, one thing I didn't mention is that you can adjust the tension on the bobbin also. Screw? With this tension screw, now there's two screws here, but the one that has like a little ridge, that's the one that adjusts the tension. Mm -hmm. Now be really careful with that. Like a quarter turn is mm -hmm. enough to Huge. change the whole thing. We have a lot of interest in heavy canvas. People okay. want to try to do their own tents, backpacks. Okay. okay, okay. That'll be handy because one of the sets of needles I gave you was a size 16. And that is what you're going to use for heavy goods. So that's a gauge? Gauge, yes, indeed. Where'd they go? Oh, here they are. Okay. I've got a set of needles in here. Each one is, each pack is marked. So that's an 11. That's the small, uh, yeah, two packs of 11. Here's a size 14. And here's a size 16. So once you take a needle out of these, don't ever put it back mm -hmm. if you've used it. Because even though it may still be good, you can use it again, don't put it in the new needles. Because you never know, it may have just enough of a nick so that it won't soak properly. Don't throw them away, because needles come in handy for all sorts of stuff. I actually have a little box here of used needles for you, mm -hmm. because they come in handy for, for when you're sewing. If you want to put your pull of something through that you can't reach, you can use a needle to go underneath the... Mm -hmm. I'll show you how to do that. That's yeah, a very cool. handy thing. Yeah. Anyway, to show you how to change it from a straight stitch to a zigzag. And what you need is your screwdriver. screwdriver again. Let's turn the machine off, raise it up, raise up the presser foot. And one thing you might want to get just to have around the machine are some magnets. Okay. Because when you unscrew, there's a few I'm going to leave attached here, but if you put them on a magnet, then they don't roll around or fall away or all that. Because the last thing you need is to lose these screws. It's amazing how hard these screws are to get mm. and how expensive they are when you can get them. So, again, we're opening it up here. This plate comes off. This plate just pops up. It's not a screw-in plate. And this is called the feed dog. This mm -hmm. thing under here. So I'm going to take off the presser foot. That just loosens. You don't ever have to take that screw all the way out. So I'm taking off. This is the presser foot. And this is the presser foot for a straight stitch. So it goes with that throat. This is called a throat plate. Mm -hmm. And this is the feed dog. Screws don't go anywhere. Now, most work I've ever had to do for a zigzag stitch. Well, it's a great thing because it gives you a lot of flexibility. There's another feed dog, and you have to take these screws out at some point if you run into an opportunity to get some more of these screws, you could get an extra set, but they use the same screws. Put that in, it can only go in one way.
again, just be really careful with these screws. They can fall and clatter and then you never know where they are. It's very frustrating. Mm -hmm. I thought I lost one today and then it turns out it hadn't fallen after all. It was still in the feet dog, so ah. that was good. <laughs> Okay, now, this is the zigzag throat plate. See the difference is, this throat plate has just a hole for the needle. This throat plate has a space for it to go mm. side to side. Goes there. These are the two screws. This pops back in the same way as before. This slides over. Now, you need a different presser foot for this. This is a zigzag presser foot. And this is a buttonhole presser foot. Mm. Both of these can be used for zigzag. But this one is good for buttonholes because you can see a little bit more where you're at. You turn. Right. But we'll just use a zigzag one for now. So again, you raise it up. And the pressure foot can fit underneath there like that. Tighten that screw. There. Keep your things handy. You don't want things flying around. You gotta know where stuff is. Okay, so same kind of thing. Raise your bobbin thread. Now, These dials here regulate the stitch length and stitch width. These two dials hold the stitch width. So um, right now it's on the very bottom. You want to loosen both of these. And if we make it to the highest, little slash is going to be where that sits, that marker sits on that one. You tighten both of these, and it will stay there. At the moment, we have a regular stitch length. So, our zigzag. Now, let's say you wanted to have, I'm trying to remember how both of these works. You wanted to just sew straight, but then do a zigzag for a bit, sew straight again, can still do that. Yeah, because it'd be zero width. Right. Let's say you wanted to hold at a certain point. Let's say you want it that wide. Now let's see which one is it that holds. No, it's not that one. One of them, <clears throat> so it's the left dial that holds the bottom and you can still move it up. 
if you loosen this and tighten the right one, it can't go farther than that, but can go down. Do you follow me? Yes. Okay. So this gives you the option to either tack only that high mm -hmm. or stay that high and then tack higher. You can adjust it as to where you want it to sit on the, on the spectrum of zigzag size. And that's what these two do. Okay, but for now, let's just give it our widest possible zigzag, and that's going to give us that. Okay, so while I'm at it, I may as well show you how to do a buttonhole right quick, because that is something that this machine can do. You want a buttonhole. I think I need a few pins out behind you on that part of the board, yeah. Great, thank you. Oh, there's some here on the machine I didn't see. Let's say you want a buttonhole that's that big. Well, if you have a button, let's say you have a button. For a round button, you would just use the regular size of the button. For a square button, you want to do it a little bit at an angle so that it's big. Okay, so that's the size of our buttonhole. This dial down here is the needle position. Mm -hmm. You can either s position the needle to the center, to the right, or to the left. Generally, I start with the needle in the center and then position it to the left when I'm working on a buttonhole. If you need to make a really wide buttonhole, you can position it to the left and to the right. But for most buttonholes, you don't need them to be that big in the center and then to the left is okay. So this is something I do sort of intuitively. So You've done a million, million I've buttons. I've done a million <laughs> buttons and I may be doing some things different than what I say. So just watch what I do. Generally, you want it to be the first notch there, and you tighten both notches so that it won't move. <coughs> you want to set the stitch length to about one or two dashes before one. Once you get past one, it, it's more of a tack as opposed to a stitch, and it takes too long. You can tear up your fabric that way if you make the stitch too small. So, here we start again, and I put the needle down right at the pin. Be careful not to hit the pin while you're sewing. And it's still too big. All right. That was wrong. Let's make it one dash past one. There, that's better. All right, so one or two dashes on the other side of one. I was wrong. Now, <clears throat> depending upon the fabric you're using, you might want to put it in a stretched frame, like an embroidery frame, if you're really afraid of it not, of it being too soft. You can also put reinforcement underneath it, like uh, some sort of fusible webbing or something. You can also just hold it. So I'm going to just hold it. And I stop right at my pin. Okay, here comes the tricky part. <clears throat> take your pin out. You release the top. So that's the right hand knob here. You release the top. And what you're going to do is pull that up to the next notch and make your bar. Um, you can make like three or four stitches across there. Okay. Now, move back to the top. Position it again so that it's in the center. Make your get the pin out. Position your needle to the left. 
check to see that you're positioned here. You might want to move your fabric so that you make sure you're in the right place. Okay, so while you're up here, make your bar tack again. Whoops. There. Now, you're going to start your other side. <clears throat> now, there's a bit of a feel here because you want to have your buttonhole be nice and close together, but you don't want the stitches to overlap because then you can't cut it open. Mm -hmm. So that's again something you have to kind of learn by feel. Uh, oh, come on, there we go. Check at the back, and then you're done. Now, this is not the best looking buttonhole. Part of the reason was that there were too many stitches up here where I was practicing. But you get the idea. And yeah. this is just something that takes practice. Well, what I do sometimes to get it started is I get a seam ripper in there to start separating the middle. Well, but you can see that one's pretty. Yeah. That's a pretty good distance. You cut that. Yeah, because I give it a poke with the seam ripper to get the tip of the scissors in because I've cut through my buttonhole before, and that's sad. Yeah, that's no fun. <laughs> that's no fun. Generally, what I do is then kind of fray this part and can cut that away so that it's cleaner. And there's a buttonhole. 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 Show you some care stuff. Very important. Um, Especially getting fuzz off. Getting fuzz off is important. Oiling it is very important. You should oil this machine, I would say, once every 10 or 15 hours of use mm -hmm. would be ideal. Um, when I came down earlier today to oil it, I could tell it had not been oiled in a while. And it was n it was not happy, <laughs> but <clears throat> there are holes here on the top of the machine. One, two, three, four, five. You okay. can put little drops of oil in those. One drop in each hole. One drop in each hole. There's one here, one here, and underneath here, you always want to put a drop at the point where the bobbin is turned, is attached to the gear, right there. Every few months, let's say, for instance, if the machine is being used every day, every few months you want to give it a really serious oil. Now what that means is you take apart the top here, you unscrew that, This. this is a big long screw on it holds the top one. And this top lifts off. There are little holes all yeah. around, one there, one there. Always want to throw a little oil on the gears, on the places where the gears meet the posts. Here, see again. Another one there. Another little hole back there. Now oh, here, can you go over them again? Sorry. Okay. Which one? Like left or right? Okay. There's a a little hole here. Mm -hmm. A little hole there. Always put a drop of oil at where the post meets the gear. Put a drop on the gear. In between each mechanism, like that. Over here also, there's another wheel. You put a drop on the where the gear meets the wheel. Okay. You can also take the side off. And this top screw, you don't have to take all the way out. You just want to loosen it. Because then you can take this one off. There. 
Same hole I was pointing at there. There's one there. And that's probably where you find a lot of your fuzz. You know, not as much as you might think it's in here. Most of the fuzz comes down there. Yeah, by Another then. hole there. Throw a little bit there. <clears throat> I talked about oiling there, but you can also raise the machine. This mm -hmm. part of the machine is called the head. Mm -hmm. And you oil there and there. The gears again, right there where they meet. Another one over there. One, two, three, four. Oh, over here. Oh, right there. So that's where you can oil underneath here. Some this this is a, a catch pan or a drip pan for oil. Depending upon how much you put in, you shouldn't have a lot sitting here. There might be a drop or two, but yeah. you shouldn't have a lot there. Okay, and this also catches lint and stuff. So, that's pretty much it. Thank you. That's how you run the 20U.